What do Bitcoin mining and training AI models like ChatGPT have in common? GPUs, also known as graphical processing units. You might have heard of the term GPU and know how it is used. But what exactly is a GPU? Why is it so powerful? To better understand GPUs, we first look at CPUs. CPUs, also known as central processing units, are a general purpose brain of the computer. They can execute arithmetic, control, and logic procedures specified by the instructions it receives. These instructions are compiled from the code programmers write. Here, we have a simplified overview of how a single core CPU works. The CPU first fetches the instruction and then decodes it to see what operation it must perform. After which, it executes the instruction and stores the result in the CPU register. Upon completion, it fetches another instruction and repeats the same cycle. Here, we see that the CPU executes a series of instructions sequentially. In particular, because this is a single core processor, there is no concept of parallel computing. Modern CPUs have additional features that allow some forms of parallelism, but for the sake of illustration in this video, we will stick to the single core example. In contrast, GPUs are designed to pass as much data through the execute phase as quickly as possible, also known as maximizing throughput. In a GPU core, at any point in time, multiple execution units are executing the same instruction on multiple inputs. This form of parallel execution is termed data level parallelism. To see GPUs in action, Consider this simple for loop where we multiply a vector of doubles by a constant, then add it to another vector of doubles. This is known as a DEXP loop, which stands for double A X plus Y. Our single core CPU example does not support instructions that operate directly on vectors, forcing us to execute this loop sequentially 1024 times by going through each index one by one. However, DEXP loops are easily parallelizable in the GPU. In a GPU, four threads execute this instruction in parallel. Instead of going through each index sequentially, we access four indexes at the same time across four threads. This group of threads executing the same instruction is known as a warp. For efficiency, a single GPU core prepares multiple warps initially and executes them one at a time. Let us simulate the GPU execution sequence. In the current time step, the GPU core starts computation for the current warp. All four threads are executed together as a lock step. In the next time step, the GPU repeats this for the next warp, which computes the next four indexes. This is repeated 256 times in total until all 1024 indexes are accessed. We see that GPUs are great at executing the same instruction on large amounts of data. This is useful in Bitcoin mining, since it involves brute force calculation of hashes, which repeatedly invokes the same mathematical operations over and over again. Similarly, when training AI models, matrix operations are repeated for large amounts of training data. GPUs are designed for exactly such repetitive workloads involving large amounts of data. You might be thinking, oh, this is cool and all, but it seems like you can only execute the same instruction. What happens if we have if-else statements and different instructions need to be executed? To deal with branching in GPUs, we utilize predicate registers for each thread to hold conditions. A predicate register is essentially like a boolean flag, which can either be true or false. If the predicate at a thread is true, the thread will execute the instruction. If not, the thread will be idle for an instruction if the predicate is false. Here, let us modify our initial for loop. A new condition has been added which causes a choice in which instruction might be executed. In line 2, we check if the index i is even. If so, we multiply xi by a, add yi, and store it in zi. If not, we instead multiply yi by a, add xi, and store it in zi. In the GPU, we have the same four threads. This time, 
based on the condition if i modulo 2 is equal to 0, predicates are set on the appropriate threads, mainly threads 0 and 2. After which, the predicates are inverted to cover the else condition so that threads 1 and 3 runs. These predicates are set by either hardware or special instructions. However, there's a drawback. This approach is only feasible for a simple one-level if-then-else statement. For more complicated branching, such as nested if-then-else statements, special hardware with special instructions needs to be used. At this point, we have seen a simple example of how a GPU can execute code in parallel. In reality, things are a bit messier. CPUs and GPUs execute instructions at a fixed clock frequency, but certain instructions may not complete within one clock period, such as reading from memory. In such cases, if nothing is done, the CPU and GPU would sit idle until the instruction can complete. We call this stalling. In each GPU call, because all threads execute in lockstep, all threads must start and finish execution together. Therefore, as soon as one thread stalls, the entire GPU call stalls. Stalling is bad because it means the GPU is sitting idle and not doing any computation. To alleviate inefficiencies due to stalling, GPUs employ a technique known as warp switching. As the name suggests, when a warp stalls, we switch to execute another warp. This switching operation is managed by a warp scheduler. When the data for stored warps become available, the warp scheduler reschedules them for later execution. By always switching to warps that are ready to execute, the warp scheduler exploits parallelism between warps and keeps the GPU busy. By now, we have an overview of how single core CPUs work and have contrasted that with GPUs. These computer architectures can be classified through something known as Flint's taxonomy. There are two axes, instruction and data, and both can be either single or multiple. In single instruction processor architectures, the processor handles a single stream of instructions. In multiple instruction processor architectures, the processor can simultaneously handle multiple separate streams of instructions. The same idea applies for the data axis. In the single instruction, single data category, we have single core CPUs. The GPU we have illustrated in the video belongs to the single instruction, multiple data category. It is quite uncommon to find something that is multiple instruction, single data. And most modern CPUs use lots of techniques to squeeze out more performance bring them into the multiple instruction, multiple data category. All in all, GPUs are powerful. But let's not forget that CPUs are powerful too. For general computing, where we want to execute a list of instructions without much delay, we use CPUs which are designed to minimize execution latency. For mathematical computation, where we want to execute an operation repeatedly over vectors and matrices, we use GPUs, which are designed to maximize execution throughput. Together, GPUs and CPUs work hand-in-hand -hand to make computations efficient.